In this Getting Started video, we'll be looking at the process of creating requirements. Once you've logged into Silk Central, you'll see across the top of Silk Central a menu bar with Home, which is your personal dashboard, requirements and the different actions that you can perform, tests, which will allow you to create tests and again perform the different actions relevant to tests. Now in this video, we're going to talk through how you go about creating new requirements. Once we select requirements, it will take us into the requirement pane. At this point, the way that the windows are structured is on the left hand side, you will see the requirement hierarchy. So this shows the high level information for the assets. On the right hand side is where you'll see the detailed information for those assets dependent on the level that you've selected or depend on the information displayed on the right. At the top project demo level, we've got the ability to see properties, attachments, assigned tests, coverage and history. At this point, we will see all tests assigned within that project to requirements. We'll see the coverage and we'll see all updates. Now, when we select on a requirement within that tree, we will see that the information displayed then in the details on the right will change. So now let's actually click on a requirement and I've clicked here on customer account management basics. So we can now see here information against that requirement. We'll be able to see all the different properties and the different assets that are available. We'll be able to see any attachments, the specific assigned tests and the coverage and history for that requirement. So what we're going to now do is we're going to now look at actually creating a requirement. Now a different way you can create a requirement by using the icons across the top as highlighted or alternatively by right clicking within the requirement structure. If I right click on my project demo project, I'll see the option to create a new requirement as well as options to import from Word or Excel. So at this point here, depending on the level I select, when I right click, I'll see different options. What I can see off the top menu is the option to create a new child requirement. So when I select creating new child requirement, it will create this at the level beneath the project demo project. It'll bring up a new child requirement box, which will give me a rich text capability to capture the requirement information. First of all, I'll be able to create my requirement name. Within the description box is where then I'll be able to capture further information. Within the description box, I'll be able to use rich text methods to capture the requirement from bullet points to hyperlinks, images, as well as the ability to format the text. In this example, I'll include a number of bullet points as well as some text for the requirement. When I include text, I can then highlight text and make this bold, underlined and even include color just to highlight the importance or relevance. If I wish to include a hyperlink, what I can do at this point is I could include www.forland.com, for example. I can then select that and then select the hyperlink. This then allows me to enter my hyperlink to link to that text. So here I enter my URL for the link. This now is underlined and actually available as a hyperlink. Now I could also attach images and additional information to provide supplementary information. At the bottom of the screen against the requirement, you'll see I have the ability to add different requirement properties just to help provide further insight and filtering capabilities. I can set my priority to critical. I can select a risk of medium. It's not reviewed because it's a new requirement and I can set a numeric value for business impact. If I'm working in an agile way, I might have an iteration option to say this is iteration one and this requirement, this epic, this user story belongs to that iteration. At this point, I can then select OK and create a new requirement at the same level or OK and create a new child requirement. I'm going to select new child requirement. Now what you can see, it's inherited the information from the parent. 
which then means at this point we can then choose to remove the information that's not relevant and then just look at decomposing a section. So in this case we're going to take evaluation checklist and then just put more insight into what we mean by that. Because this is a child it's obviously decomposing that requirement. At the bottom with the requirement properties you'll see that these have by default been inherited by the parent. If I deselect inherit from parent I can then change the priority of this one to high. And I can do this for all of the different requirement properties. Now if there's requirement properties you want relevant to your organisation we can create custom requirement properties. So now what we'll see is that those two new requirements, the parent and child, have been created in the tree. You'll see that the create evaluation requirement and new requirement both have green pluses to indicate these are new requirements. The email advertisement has a blue up arrow to indicate this is a requirement that's been updated. So this uses a requirement flagging capability for changes and the change management. Ones without an icon indicate there's no change. When we click on one of our requirements, we'll then see the full properties and information and attributes that we've entered against that requirement. This really is a process then that you can repeat to create requirements at different levels. If we need to edit a requirement, you can right click on the requirement and do edit to make updates. Now as we go through the detailed information on the right, you can see we have an attachment tab. On the attachment tab, we can select to upload a file or to attach a link. So in this case here, we may want to put a link into our requirement document that's in our user repository or a link to a user story in a different system. Here I can then incorporate the link to make this link available to the requirement. So here I'm going to include borland.com as the attachment information. I can include a description as to why I'm including this link as a reference point and that's now available against the requirement. We'll see we've got a tab where it will show what assigned requirements we have. As this is a new requirement we don't yet have any assigned and again with the coverage there's not yet any coverage as we haven't created any tests and we'll see a full history of all changes that have been made to that requirement and the same will apply when we look at the child with properties, attachments, assigned tests and coverage. Now at this stage we're now ready and we've completed creation of requirements. Now that you have requirements you're now ready to start creating tests.